So I tested it. This is the maximum range around 300 to 400 meters. You see the small building over there from there to here. Actually, it's quite long. Uh. So guys, today I'm going to show you how to make an ESP32 based transmitter and receiver for your DIY project, which uses ESP Now protocol. So first of all, you'll be needing is two ESP, one for the transmitter and another one for the receiver. So this is for the receiver. And uh, for the transmitter, you'll be needing two joysticks and uh, one switch and a boost converter and uh, you can use a uh, 18650 battery mount if you're having lithium ion battery you could also add a switch uh, this type of switch and this one you could use a cheaper switch no problem this switch uh, can be used as aux 2 and this one as the aux 1 so let's get started First of all, you have to connect your VX and VY to your ESP32s. You have to connect to your ESP32s 34 for the X and 35 for the Y. You have to take your next joystick and can connect your V and uh, VX and VY. Connect it to the VX to the 32 pin. This is 32 pin and VY to the 33 pin. Then you have to take this type of wire and uh, connect it to the 3.3 output of the ESP. Then connect it to the voice stick. Then you have to connect the switch and the boost converter like this. You do have to calibrate the boost converter to give 5 volts. And you have to connect the wires like this. For 3 pin switches with 3 position you have to connect the middle the 3.3 VCC of the ESP. Now you have to connect the positive terminal to the ESP's 5 volt in and the negative terminal to the ESP's ground and also you have to connect the same negative wire to the joystick's ground. So now I have uh, connected all the wires. You see that uh, the two goes to the ground and the positive goes to the 5 volt in and I have calibrated for the 5 volt by changing the potentiometer. Then uh, uh, on the switch I have uh, two pins. The middle one is the 3.3 and the bottom and the top one you have to connect to the pin number 25 and 26 on ESP. So 25 the top one and 26 and the bottom. On the next switch you have to do is the same. Connect to the 27 and 14. So 27 for the top one, which will be right there. 27 and the 14 for the next pin, the bottom one. So after you've done that, we will move on to the coding. This is the full wiring of the TX. Then you have to take another ESP, which we are going to use for the receiver. So we have to type this code and upload the code after that in serial monitor you will see this rx mac address copy that after that you have to connect to the transmitter esp then on the code you will see that there is a rc mac you have to replace that with the value that you got on your esp after you connect the ESP, select your ports and ESP32 dev module, then uh, paste the code and uh, uh, upload the code. On serial monitor, you will see that you can actually check whether it's working. All of the pins are working. Don't mind the values as these values are not 
actually going to be represented in the flight controller will be different and you also have to upload a code for the rx of your esp now after you upload the code for your the rx and tx so what you need to do now is i have a esp32 base flight controller so this is the flight controller that i am using yeah this one all right actually they both look same so uh, I'm using this as a flight controller, uh, beta flight. So what you need to do is, this is my RX. You have to connect your pin number 17 to the. You have to connect your pin number 17 to your uh, flight controller. So the pin number 17 sends iBus. So you have to make sure that you connect and set it for the iBus protocol in your flight controller so I will show you in beta flight I will be turning on my uh, transmitter then connect the flight controller to your PC go to beta flight connect your beta flight then you will see in receiver you have to change your uh the values to the in serial you have to change to i to uh, control the drone you can see the pitch values are changing the roll you can slowly move it and you see it's a good sensitivity also for the throttle and the yawn everything is pretty fine you can see it's pretty good now, if you are seeing some kind of this, um, uh, random movement, you can go down and increase the RC dead band to fix it. And uh, flight controller and the receiver is ready to use. I also made this for your TX. If you are interested in 3D printing, you could use this model for 3D printing. It will be in the link in description. Just so if you are interested in watching how to install uh, beta flight on your uh, ESP32, you can watch another video and... Okay, now I'm going to check the range of the ESP based uh, receiver. Uh, we have the uh, transmitter on the bike and uh, this is using PCB antenna, so it's going to be the worst case scenario. And uh, if you are considering for longer range, you could uh, use this type of connector. This is a this type of antenna. This is a, a cheap antenna. You can buy that. So we are going to test it out on the PCB antenna now. You see the small building over there. That's uh, that's where the transmitter is. Then I move a little bit further and uh, this is the range that you get on uh, cheap Chinese drones and some Wi-Fi based drones. Then I move a bit further and uh, the range was still fine. On this stage the range was still going good and uh, I move a bit more further again. At this point it was quite hard to see the reference point for the TX. But still, um, we moved on. So I tested it. This is the maximum range around 300 to 400 meters. You see the small building over there from there to here. Actually, it's quite long. I think it's enough for a uh, short range uh, FPV stuff if you are interested in it. So, quite long. And uh, thank you for watching.